Stories and Documentary Network. Welcome, dear viewers, to a journey through time and space, as we embark on a captivating exploration of ancient India. The land that whispers tales of grandeur, wisdom, and a civilization that flourished eons ago. India, a country known for its diversity and cultural richness, has a history that stretches far beyond the boundaries of the present. In the annals of time, ancient India stands as a testament to the resilience, innovation, and profound spirituality of a civilization that has shaped the course of human history. Before the bustling metropolises and modern wonders, there was a time when the ancient rivers echoed with hymns, and the soil bore witness to the rise and fall of empires. In this documentary, we delve into the very fabric of ancient India, a tapestry woven with threads of philosophy, art, science, and commerce. To understand the present, we must first grasp the roots from which it emerged. The ancient period in India, spanning thousands of years, lays the foundation for the intricate mosaic of traditions that define the subcontinent today. From the banks of the mighty Indus to the fertile plains of the Ganges, this is the cradle of civilizations. Why does it matter to unravel the secrets of ancient civilizations? As we stand on the shoulders of our forebears, peering into the past allows us not only to appreciate the richness of our heritage but also to glean valuable lessons. Ancient India, with its myriad stories, serves as a mirror reflecting our own journey as a global society. Join us as we traverse through epics, unveiling the treasures of wisdom left behind by our ancestors. In this odyssey through time, we discover the profound relevance of ancient civilizations in shaping the trajectory of our world today. India situated in South Asia, derives its name from the Indus River. The term, Bharata, is employed in its constitution, drawing inspiration from the legendary emperor Bharata, whose narrative unfolds in the Indian epic Mahabharata. According to the Puranas, religious and historical texts documented in the 5th century before the Common Era, Bharata accomplished the conquest of the entire Indian subcontinent, governing the land with tranquility. Consequently, the region became known as Bharatavarsha, signifying, the subcontinent of Bharata. The Indian subcontinent boasts a history of hominid activity spanning over 250,000 years, establishing it as one of the earliest inhabited regions on Earth. Archaeological findings, including early human-utilized artifacts like stone tools, indicate an exceptionally ancient timeline for human habitation and technological advancements in the area. Despite the well-recognized contributions of Mesopotamian and Egyptian civilizations, India's historical and cultural wealth has often been overlooked, particularly in the Western world. The Indus Valley civilization stood among the greatest of the ancient world, surpassing the territorial extent of both Egypt and Mesopotamia, while fostering a dynamic and progressive culture. India serves as the cradle for four major world religions, Hinduism, Jainism, Buddhism, and Sikhism alongside the Charvaka philosophical school, which influenced the evolution of scientific thought and inquiry. The ancient people of India were pioneers in various fields, contributing to facets of modern life that are now taken for granted. Their innovations encompassed the development of the flush toilet, drainage and sewer systems, public pools, advancements in mathematics, veterinary science, plastic surgery, board games, yoga, meditation, and more. The prehistory of the Indian subcontinent, encompassing present-day India, Pakistan, and Nepal, stands as a treasure trove for archaeologists and scholars seeking insights into the ancient past. Centuries before the migration of humans into Europe, the proto-human species Homo heidelbergensis inhabited the Indian subcontinent. The recognition of their presence in India gained prominence relatively late, primarily due to the delayed start of Western archaeological excavations in the region beginning earnestly only in the 1920s. While the ancient city of Harappa was known since 1829, its archaeological significance was initially overlooked. Subsequent excavations, spurred by an interest in identifying sites mentioned in the Indian epics Mahabharata and Ramayana, occurred without much consideration for a much older history of the region. For instance, the village of Balathal in Rajasthan, dating back to 4000 before the Common Era, exemplifies the antiquity of India's history. 
Balathol's discovery in 1962 and subsequent excavations in the 1990s revealed its historical depth. Even more ancient is the Neolithic site of Mergar, dating to approximately 7000 before the Common Era, with evidence of even earlier habitation, discovered in 1974. Archaeological findings over the past 50 years have significantly reshaped the understanding of India's past and, by extension, world history. A pivotal discovery in 2009 at Balathol, a 4,000-year-old skeleton, provided the oldest evidence of leprosy in India. This finding challenged previous assumptions, suggesting that leprosy, once considered a relatively recent disease, had deeper historical roots in the region. It is now recognized that substantial human activity in India predates the Holocene period, reaching back 10,000 years. This understanding prompts a re-evaluation and revision of historical assumptions based on earlier work in Egypt and Mesopotamia. The origins of the Vedic tradition in India, still practiced today, can be traced, at least in part, to the indigenous people of ancient sites like Balathol. Their interactions and blending with Aryan migrants around 2000 to 1500 before the Common Era mark the onset of the Vedic period, during which the Hindu scriptures known as the Vedas were codified in written form. The inception of the Indus Valley Civilization dates back to approximately 7000 before the Common Era, gradually expanding across the lower Gangetic Valley southwards and northwards to Malwa. These ancient cities, surpassing contemporaneous settlements in other regions, were strategically located based on cardinal points and predominantly constructed with kiln-fired mud bricks. Distinguished by technological advancements, the homes featured spacious courtyards, kitchens, workrooms for food preparation, and smaller bedrooms. Family life in the Indus Valley civilization revolved around the front of the house, especially the courtyard, reflecting similarities with inferred practices in Rome, Egypt, Greece, and Mesopotamia. Notably, the technological sophistication of the Indus Valley structures surpassed their counterparts, incorporating flush toilets and wind catchers on rooftops, possibly originating from ancient Persia, for natural air conditioning. Remarkably, the sewer and drainage systems in these cities exceeded the standards of Rome at its peak. Among the notable sites of this civilization are Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa, situated in present-day Pakistan. Harappa, after which the Harappan civilization is named, is categorized into early, middle, and mature periods, spanning roughly 5,000 to 4,000 before the Common Era, 4,000 to 2,900 before the Common Era, and 2,900 to 1,900 before the Common Era, respectively. Harappa, built during the Middle Period around 3,000 before the Common Era, suffered substantial damage in the 19th century due to British workers using its materials for railroad construction. Despite this, remnants indicate its past significance as a Bronze Age community with a population estimated at 30,000. Mohenjo-Daro, meaning, Mound of the Dead, in Sindhi, remained well preserved until its discovery in 1922. With meticulously planned streets and an advanced drainage system, Mohenjo-Daro boasted the Great Bath as a central structure. The city's citizens demonstrated proficiency in working with metals like copper, bronze, lead, and tin, as evidenced by artifacts such as the bronze statue of the dancing girl and individual seals. Agricultural practices included the cultivation of barley, wheat, peas, sesame, and cotton. Trade played a crucial role, with speculation that ancient Mesopotamian texts referring to Megan and Mela may allude to India in general or specifically to Mohenjo-Daro. Artifacts from the Indus Valley have been discovered in Mesopotamia, although pinpointing their exact origin in India remains a challenge. The inhabitants of the Harappan civilization practiced a diverse array of worship, engaging in ritualistic reverence of numerous deities. Archaeological finds, including statues of gods like Indra, the god associated with storm and war, were discovered across various sites. Particularly noteworthy were terracotta artifacts depicting the Shakti, representing the mother goddess, indicating a widespread devotion to the feminine principle. Around 2000 to 1500 before the Common Era, another group known as the Aryans is believed to have migrated into India via the Khyber Pass. They assimilated into the existing culture, introducing their gods and the Sanskrit language to the region's established belief systems. 
The impact of the Aryans on the indigenous people remains a subject of debate, but it is widely acknowledged that their arrival coincided with a decline in the Harappan culture. Scholars posit climate change as a potential factor, citing evidence of both drought and floods in the region. The Indus River's increased flooding, leading to approximately 30 feet or 9 meters of silt at Mohenjo-Daro, may have destroyed crops and led to famine. Changes in the monsoon patterns, crucial for crop irrigation, could have prompted people to migrate from northern cities to southern lands. Additionally, the loss of trade relations with Mesopotamia and Egypt, both undergoing internal conflicts, is considered another possible cause for the decline. Early 20th century racialist writers, influenced by Max Muller, erroneously suggested that the Harappan civilization fell to an invasion by light-skinned Aryans, a theory now discredited. Equally implausible is the notion that extraterrestrials forced the inhabitants to migrate south. Mohenjo-Daro's mysterious vitrification, where parts of the site appear melted as if exposed to intense heat, has been compared to similar phenomena at sites like Traprane Law in Scotland, often attributed to the effects of warfare. However, theories proposing the city's destruction by an ancient atomic blast orchestrated by extraterrestrial beings are generally dismissed as lacking credibility. Whatever the reason for the abandonment of the cities, the period that followed the decline of the Indus Valley civilization is known as the Vedic period, characterized by a pastoral lifestyle and adherence to the religious texts known as the Vedas. Society became divided into four classes, the Varnas, popularly known as the caste system, which were comprised of the Brahmana at the top, priests and scholars, the Kshatriya next, the warriors, the Vaishya, farmers and merchants, and the Shudra, laborers. The lowest caste was the Dalits, the untouchables, who handled meat and waste, though there is some debate over whether this class existed in antiquity. At first, it seems this caste system was merely a reflection of one's occupation but, in time, it became more rigidly interpreted to be determined by one's birth and one was not allowed to change castes nor to marry into a caste other than one's own. This understanding was a reflection of the belief in an eternal order to human life dictated by a supreme deity. While the religious beliefs which characterize the Vedic period are considered much older, it was during this time that they became systematized as the religion of Sanatan Dharma, eternal order, known today as Hinduism, this name deriving from the Indus, or Sindus, river where worshippers were known to gather, hence, Sindus, and then, Hindus. The underlying tenet of Sanatan Dharma is that there is an order and a purpose to the universe and human life and, by accepting this order and living in accordance with it, one will experience life as it is meant to be properly lived. While Sanatan Dharma is considered by many a polytheistic religion consisting of many gods, it is actually monotheistic in that it holds there is one god, Brahman, the self but also the universe and creator of the observable universe, who, because of his greatness, cannot be fully apprehended save through the many aspects which are revealed as the different gods of the Hindu pantheon. It is Brahman who decrees the eternal order and maintains the universe through it. This belief in an order to the universe reflects the stability of the society in which it grew and flourished as, during the Vedic period, governments became centralized and social customs integrated fully into daily life across the region. Besides the Vedas, the great religious and literary works of the Puranas, the Mahabharata, Bhagavad Gita, and the Ramayana all come from this period. In the 6th century before the Common Era, the religious reformers Vardhamana Mahavira and Siddhartha Gautama developed their own belief systems and broke away from mainstream Sanatan Dharma to eventually create their own religions of Jainism and Buddhism, respectively. These changes in religion were a part of a wider pattern of social and cultural upheaval which resulted in the formation of city-states and the rise of powerful kingdoms, such as the Magadha Kingdom under the ruler Bimbisara and the proliferation of philosophical schools of thought which challenged orthodox Hinduism. Mahavira rejected the Vedas and placed the responsibility for salvation and enlightenment directly on the individual and the Buddha would later do the same. The philosophical school of Charvaka rejected all supernatural elements of religious belief and maintained that only the senses could be trusted to apprehend the truth and, further, that the greatest goal in life was pleasure and one's own enjoyment. Although Charvaka did not endure as a school of thought, it influenced the development of a new way of thinking which was more grounded and pragmatic, and eventually encouraged the adoption of empirical and scientific observation and methods. 
Cities also expanded during this time and the increased urbanization and wealth attracted the attention of Cyrus II of the Persian Achaemenid Empire who invaded India in 530 before the Common Era and initiated a campaign of conquest in the region. Ten years later, under the reign of his son, Darius I Northern India was firmly under Persian control, the regions corresponding to Afghanistan and Pakistan today, and the inhabitants of that area subject to Persian laws and customs. One consequence of this, possibly, was an assimilation of Persian and Indian religious beliefs which some scholars point to as an explanation for further religious and cultural reforms. Persia held dominance in northern India until the conquest of Alexander the Great in 330 before the Common Era who marched on India after Persia had fallen. Again, foreign influences were brought to bear on the region giving rise to the Greco-Buddhist culture which impacted all areas of culture in northern India from art to religion to dress. Statues and reliefs from this period depict Buddha and other figures as distinctly Hellenic in dress and pose, known as the Gandhara school of art. Following Alexander's departure from India, the Mauryan Empire rose under the reign of Chandragupta Maurya until, by the end of the 3rd century before the Common Era, it ruled over almost all of northern India. Chandragupta's son, Bindusara extended the empire throughout almost the whole of India. His son was Ashoka the Great under whose rule the empire flourished at its height. Eight years into his reign, Ashoka conquered the eastern city-state of Kalinga which resulted in a death toll numbering over 100,000. Shocked at the destruction and death, Ashoka embraced the teachings of the Buddha and embarked on a systematic program advocating Buddhist thought and principles. He established many monasteries, gave lavishly to Buddhist communities, and is said to have erected 84,000 stupas across the land to honor the Buddha. In 249 before the Common Era, on pilgrimage to sites associated with the Buddha's life, he formally established the village of Lumbini as Buddha's birthplace, erecting a pillar there, and commissioned the creation of his famous edicts of Ashoka to encourage Buddhist thought and values. Prior to Ashoka's reign, Buddhism was a small sect struggling to gain adherence. After Ashoka sent missionaries to foreign countries carrying the Buddhist vision, the small sect began to grow into the major religion it is today. The Mauryan Empire declined and fell after Ashoka's death and the country splintered into many small kingdoms and empires, such as the Kushan Empire, in what has come to be called the Middle Period. This era saw the increase of trade with Rome following Augustus Caesar's incorporation of Egypt into the newly established Roman Empire in 30 before the Common Era. Rome now became India's primary partner in trade as the Romans also had already annexed much of Mesopotamia. This was a time of individual and cultural development in the various kingdoms which finally flourished in what is considered the Golden Age of India under the reign of the Gupta Empire. The Gupta Empire is thought to have been founded by one Sri Gupta, backquote Sri, means backquote Lord, who probably ruled between 240 to 280 before the Common Era. As Sri Gupta is thought to have been of the Vaishya, merchant, class, his rise to power in defiance of the caste system is unprecedented. He laid the foundation for the government which would so stabilize India that virtually every aspect of culture reached its height under the reign of the Guptas. Philosophy, literature, science, mathematics, architecture, astronomy, technology, art, engineering, religion, and astronomy, among other fields, all flourished during this period, resulting in some of the greatest of human achievements. The Puranas of Vyasa were compiled during this period and the famous caves of Ajanta and Ellora, with their elaborate carvings and vaulted rooms, were also begun. Kalidasa the poet and playwright wrote his masterpiece Shakuntala and the Kama Sutra was also written, or compiled from earlier works, by Vatsyayana. Varahamahira explored astronomy at the same time as Aryabhata, the mathematician, made his own discoveries in the field and also recognized the importance of the concept of zero which he is credited with inventing. As the founder of the Gupta Empire defied orthodox Hindu thought, it is not surprising that the Gupta rulers advocated and propagated Buddhism as the national belief and this is the reason for the plentitude of Buddhist works of art, as opposed to Hindu, at sites such as Ajanta and Ellora. The empire declined slowly under a succession of weak rulers until it collapsed around 550 before the Common Era. 
The Gupta Empire was then replaced by the rule of Harshavardhan who ruled the region for 42 years. A literary man of considerable accomplishments, he authored three plays in addition to other works. Harsha was a patron of the arts and a devout Buddhist who forbade the killing of animals in his kingdom but recognized the necessity to sometimes kill humans in battle. He was a highly skilled military tactician who was only defeated in the field once in his life. Under his reign, the north of India flourished but his kingdom collapsed following his death. The invasion of the Huns had been repeatedly repelled by the Guptas and then by Harshavardhan but, with the fall of his kingdom, India fell into chaos and fragmented into small kingdoms lacking the unity necessary to fight off invading forces. In 712 before the Common Era the Muslim general Muhammad bin Qasim conquered northern India, establishing himself in the region of modern-day Pakistan. The Muslim invasion saw an end to the indigenous empires of India and, from then on, Independent city-states or communities under the control of a city would be the standard model of government. The Islamic Sultanates rose in the region of modern-day Pakistan and spread northwest. The disparate world views of the religions which now contested each other for acceptance in the region and the diversity of languages spoken, made the unity and cultural advances, such as were seen in the time of the Guptas, difficult to reproduce. Consequently, the region was easily conquered by the Islamic Mughal Empire, India would then remain subject to various foreign influences and powers, among them the Portuguese, the French, and the British, until finally winning its independence in 1947. As the sun sets on this odyssey through time, remember that the story of ancient India is not confined to the pages of history. It is a narrative woven into the very soul of a nation and its people. Explore the depths, learn from the past, and connect with the profound tapestry of ancient India. May the echoes of this journey resonate in your hearts, inspiring a deeper understanding of the rich and timeless heritage we share. Thank you for joining us on this expedition through time. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel to stay connected with more enriching explorations into the wonders of our world.